Hi, this is Samesh Swat from Forest Row App. I'm sitting here with Edouard. Edouard is part of the Forest Row Forward group. Um, hopefully the audio is okay. So, welcome Edouard. Thanks Salut, for Suresh. this chat and thanks yeah, for taking cool. part in, our, in the podcast. Pleasure. And um, yeah, so how did, how did you get involved in Forest Row Forward? <clears throat> um, word of mouth. I heard about it, uh, when was it, in December or January? started from a small group that started talking, discussing about a project. Mm. And uh, I joined my first meeting in January or February, somewhere there. And I've been on uh, since on. And then we needed to find who's going to run for candidates. And uh, I just had the stupid idea of putting my hand up and uh, here I am. Okay. For it. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. We're here currently at um, Tablehurst, the lambing day. It's been a fantastic day. Mm. Edouard's been answering questions and, you know, connecting with the local community the whole day. So he's in. in so I'm, I'm very tired. Well, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a long day of talk, I heard. Yeah. Um, what, what was interesting, we went to the community meeting the other day. That was really interesting to, to hear your, your background because I know you as a, a woodworker. Mm-hmm. Edouard works in, in woodwork. But he's got a very interesting uh, academic background too. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about your background? Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I did a master in engineering and physics, what you call microelectronics and nanotechnologies. And from there on, I went to do a PhD in astrophysics in Netherlands and Germany. Okay, wait, let's just, let's just pause on that. A PhD in astrophysics. Why? <laughs> and then I, then I went back po- uh, to start doing postdocs, what you call postdocs, back in my hometown university and lecturing uh, to master students. But I could feel that this was not fulfilling me. Uh, there were in a, a range of reasons, so I did a, <coughs> a planned and a well-ordered transition to uh, something that gave me more sense. And uh, what I was doing was too brainy, and I needed to use more my hands and my heart also. And I found out about strobel construction. So uh, at the age of 30, approx, uh, I just took my backpack and I went to follow artisans on uh, big links uh, to learn about it. So unpaid, voluntary for two years. And I've, I was stunned by the technique, the touch of the material, but I was also, stu- also stunned by the human experience that it was uh, with volunteers, etc. It was amazing. Uh, so yeah, for the heart, uh, and then from Strobel, I did more carpentry, and I developed uh, skills of traditional timber framing. So I like to do eco constructions. Wow, eco construction, mm-hmm. fantastic! Mm-hmm. Have you m- been involved? Because uh, there's a few eco constructions happening in this area. I think, mm-hmm. um, for example, I think Voter's um, wife is an eco builder. She builds in natural materials. She's, there's quite a, quite a, you know, in the community, there's a lot of people that are in, interested in that type of activity. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, there's space for that a lot. But then there's the eco-construction and eco-construction, you know, it's, uh, you've got to look at it, uh, what materials are used, what level of insulation, etc. Uh, now, there's one thing, it's, it might sound a bit weird, but I'm just going to go with this, and that's what I remind people the if I ask you the trick question, what is the most eco-friendly building? Mm. Or, and it comes from a, this megawatt scenario in France. I think there's the equivalent in Britain of uh, you know for transitions and energy. Yeah. And this question is, what is the cleanest kilowatt hour of electricity, let's say? And people scratch their head, oh, it's going to be solar, wind, etc. And yeah. in fact, the answer is, it's the kilowatt hour that you do not need. Uh-huh. That's the cleanest because you don't need to produce it uh, in any place. So same with buildings. Uh, <clears throat> so it's the amount of energy that it saves yeah. rather than the less energy yeah, that it uses. that you don't need. Right? Yeah, yeah. So any building, uh, apart from really specific uh, ones, etc., but there, there is going to be an impact to building it. We're trying to minimize the impact. Yes, you can so lock up. impact on the environment, the amount of materials that Embodied needed. energy, uh, eventually CO2 emissions. So yes, you can use uh, carbon locking uh, materials, but generally talking, and then you have a building that will need to dissipate energy during its lifetime because you need to keep warming it. Sure. So if you don't need it, it's better not to build it. But if you really have to make a building, then you should do it this way, this way. Sure. 
Why not? What do you think of the? Um, there's a building on site here. Have you have you looked at that? I think it's a straw straw yeah. bale building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah on site here at Tablehurst. Yeah, it got finished just before I moved to uh, to Forest Row. Yeah. And I went inside. Uh, I've seen it, and uh, so I'm used to work with self builders, etc. So I'm just gonna be. A bit cheeky because I'm a professional. I've done 40 store bell houses. Uh, I've worked on 40. Really? So yeah, it's not perfect here or there, but seriously, it, they did pretty, pretty well. Great. And, uh, very good. And also the budget for which they did it, they, yeah. they pretty much nailed it. So it's a good example. Wow, yeah. well, fantastic. So um, in terms of uh, Forest Road Forward, what made you, what made your interest in in um, applying to be, you know, part of the election process? Mm -hmm. um, well, basically, we need change, <laughs> some form of change, I think. So I, I study other things also. I've, uh, with my scientific background, I've looked into climate change. Uh, I remember in 2006, I read the IPCC assessment report number four, so International Panel on Climate Change. This is the creme de la creme of uh, the scientific knowledge on uh, climate change. And I said, wow. WTF, well, like this is this is serious, and then I kept studying that. Uh, also, the economy, uh, how our capitalist globalized uh, civilization <coughs> needs energy, fossil fuels. Uh, what's what's the landscape there? What's what's happening? And uh, it seems that we are uh, entering an era where we're going to have multiple crises coming from uh, stress. Uh, from uh, different areas, so climate, energy, and uh, yeah, many more. So, Environment. Uh, so yeah, it yeah. does look that we're, uh, my understanding is that we are entering a downtrend, uh, how fast, how brutal, or etc. So, uh, times of change ahead. And uh, if we stay the same with our same old patterns, or same tools, or same mentalities, or same culture, uh, it's probably not going to work. So this is what you call this notion of resilience also that I'm very interested in. It's uh, for complex systems, what you call. Uh, how can you adapt to uh, stress and changing times, etc. So yeah, uh, so the, you know, it's, it's all good to have theories, etc. But then at some point, you just go stand up and do something about it. Okay. So that's why running for the parish constitutions. And I think with all the other people on the forest of four, we are sharing we have different uh, in opinions yes. and interests, which is great. That's healthy. Yes. You need heterogeneity. Yeah, you need homogeneity. You need, yeah, you need a, like a variety of opinions and a variety of understandings. And right. But the good thing is we have massive common ground also, like values. We are interested in ways of working. So obviously, this is exploratory. You know, assuming we do get uh, elected, it's going to be, uh, yeah. A process, a work, uh, an experiment, but based on using tools that have already been tested and approved in some other places. So I know many people mention food, but there are other things like neighborhood parliaments, uh, you know, participative democracy, etc. So it's it's about for us to pick up these things and try to see how we can change the culture here. And basically, I mean, it's it's kind of a grassroots thing, a bottom up rather than a top down. We're aiming for. That's amazing, and I, I just think it's great that you know you've got a whole new group of people that are coming in that have never been involved in politics before, mm -hmm. who are coming in with the intention to serve, and who are bringing in a whole new lot of ideas. Because as as like things change in such a dramatic fashion and so quickly, we're going to need like new ideas and new ways of solving problems right. and new ways of managing the change. Right. I think it's fantastic. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean. You, you, you can... You could say that the solutions are, uh, for me, I mean, we, we need to uh, work on all levels, individual level, internal, spiritual, uh, on your practices, like, uh, I don't know, what you buy, how you travel, um, your heating, etc. But we also need to look uh, at the collective level. Social uh, level. Yeah, what, what are, or yeah. where does energy co comes from, so in a material way. But okay. then there's the collective internal, you know, so which is more like, um, yeah, this this culture. Um, uh, Socialized, uh, social, the social level, connection, community, networking. Voilà, and try to develop, the more you connect, the more you tend to develop uh, cooperative behaviors rather than competitive behaviors. And the, cap sure. the capitalism has been clearly going towards individualism and more and more and more. And uh, if we remain with a state of mind like this in times of difficulties, it can lead to uh, 
behaviors that are not as efficient, therefore not as resilient. So in fact, I, my understanding is that for the times ahead to come, we better start training and working on work, being together. Yeah, building uh, relationships, be building connection, building community, cooperative. building you know, relationships. Uh, with an open heart. Yeah, yeah. Um, Strengthening these already established uh, communities forming new connections, new relationships, making it strong because I think things are pretty good now. You know, there's, yeah. not, there's not a huge amount of like things that are bearing down on us, but things are happening as well. There's whispers in the air, you know, who knows what's going to come into the future. And I think what you're doing is amazing, what you guys are doing. And hopefully that um, leads us to be more resilient more connected you can only be positive well but it, it is a process it's a never uh, ongoing work which it's not don't expect a revolution or a miracles in uh, the next mandate if uh, you know in four years it's a long-term program and we need sure. to get started uh, asap uh, so this, this, this is funny because you need to find this balance between speed and quality also. So, you know, we, and, yeah. and so we, we, we'll, we'll try, we'll try. But uh, as you understood from the interview with other people, it's, it's not the council, uh, the councillors or whoever is at the head that is going to decide. It's all together that we need to decide. So how do we do that? Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's an interesting conversation in mm. how to how to make things more, you know, interactive. Mm. And so can people can take part more, um, people can bring their own ideas and they're actually heard and yeah, more interactive and more participatory. Voilà. Uh, so listening to people uh, is essential. It's a first step, but also it's, it's very important to enable people to empower them, empower to, them to yeah. implement, because you know, talk, 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 Fine, you need to go through a stage of discussion, back and forth, like, maturing, like, and you talk to people, but at some point you need to deliver and act. Mm. And uh, so you need to be realistic and pragmatic. You know, if you if you ask for the moon, of course that's not, never gonna work. So so what steps can we do and empower people to join in? So we were I mean let's see what form it takes, but you know there are these things called panels or say for example, I don't know, I'll just give an example. Or, the Weirwood Reservoir. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I've only been here for two years and a half, so not too sure exactly, but uh, I could see, wow, mm, not very accessible. Wow, this is an amazing place. What could we do? Uh, I heard that there's a new owner of the place uh, uh -huh. who's kind of very open to trying to, and some people are interested, so we could say, okay, let's make, let's make a, a group, a task force that will, uh, so we give a mandate to uh, people that can work together and uh, you, uh, for during one year, etc., you work on what you can do. Uh, and the, the idea is that these groups is you delegate and you trust people into their capacity. Uh, so you, you give responsibilities to people, you empower them. And with this mandate, those people, their role is to uh, work out what to do with the rear wood and how to implement it and of course then they discuss with the other circle so then they then this circle has to self-organize you don't tell them you must work like that you you, you figure out how you want to work yeah it can be like that can be like that but, and they can get people in if they want and then they need to uh, have a, elect themselves a representative to communicate with the other circles and so you could design this as a the council being a more central circle if you want yeah but we don't want this to be too centralized huh? yeah, the yeah. idea is to try to decentralize and also to have cross communication not necessarily a star that all goes to the center so, so it's trying to create uh, that's how i see it huh? trying to create a dense web which is uh, yes rather decentralized and i know from my studies of complex systems that the more you have heterogeneity uh, so even in ideas in thinking this is healthy well, and the more you have cross connections a dense web etc you have created something resilient and resilient resi yeah, the resilience yeah. is the capacity for a system to maintain one or some of its property in a changing environment yeah yeah uh, the environment is going to change here yeah, massively. yeah. We can so be sure. um, how do we create this resilience yeah in this way, creating a dense web of communication of different uh, units. And yeah. by empowering people, you get more people uh, on board. Uh. Yeah, how do, you, how do you, do you, have you come up with any um, plans to, um, to engage people more in the process? Because I, I guess that's the, the next challenge is like once you, <clears throat> once you, if you guys do get elected, how to then implement 
those other little circles of you know <coughs> committees or panels who are who can then expand your level of of ability to 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 make changes because now you've got more people more people are involved in the process and more people can you know obviously with more people you've got more resources and more time and more things that you can implement so yeah so that's gonna be interesting i don't know if you yeah i mean what, what, what i was just explaining is uh is uh, is an idea so it needs uh, again it needs to be decided uh, yeah obviously these are just ideas uh -huh. but it's good it's good but to, it's, to it's be creative yeah, yeah. yeah you know, somewhere there and uh, yeah there, so. there is hopefully going to be a, a new momentum you know i mean we we tend to get very positive feedbacks uh, from forest for forward about this initiative yeah and so there's going to be wow like a oomph and it's about uh, managing this enthusiasm mm. but not to overburn also so it's all about uh, but they, when this momentum uh, starts is how indeed if people come to you and say we want to do something etc the, the idea is okay how do we do that well let's let's try to organize you don't turn people back and say no sorry uh, we're not ready or we can't we don't want exercise it's give the space to everybody who wants to uh, it's open door you know, we don't close the door on anybody quoi. how do we organize that exam i don't know we'll have to figure it out uh, yeah we've, yeah we've, we've, great it's uh, exciting very exciting mm -hmm. so um is there anything else um i'm quite sure about it. people are packing up yeah and i've got very little time as well yeah. um is there anything else you would like to communicate or no just uh, but for those that don't know yeah you've got i mean i don't know when this uh, you've got until 17th of april to register to uh -huh. vote Okay. which uh, by the time this comes out it might already be just on the edge Monday, yeah, yeah. Monday 12 o'clock yeah, yeah. and then just go and vote on 4th of May quoi. That's all. And, okay. uh, and get in quoi. join in yeah. <laughs> enjoy the fun yeah to participate huh? right? Right. so thank you very much uh, thank you Edouard for Merci taking so the time Merci. out Merci. to have this conversation thank you too and um, look forward to hopefully you know if whoever gets in gets in and, and um, I look forward to myself participating more and being more involved and yeah fantastic cool thank you very Merci much so much. cheers ciao